Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I'm going to have a little fun and show you something a little different, a little geeky. And we are going to be doing some bash scripting and screenshotting of web pages and attaching it to a ServiceNow record using the attachment API. Now let me explain what the heck I'm up to and why I'm doing this. You may not know, but I have an application built on ServiceNow that crawls the ServiceNow store that keeps track of all the updates. And occasionally applications go away from the ServiceNow store. Whatever reason, I'm not here about why. I just know that they're in my database and then I can no longer get to them. So when I see them in my database, they kind of show up like you're seeing here with this NA. Um, and that's just because of the way that um, if I can't find a particular attribute in the application, it shows up as NA or not applicable, meaning I couldn't find it, right? That's just a Justin convention. It's nothing to do with ServiceNow. You can see it there in the version as well. Now, if we scroll down, we see that it's NA, NA here too. So at some point, this URL, appeared in the sitemap or appeared in my database, but when you go to it, it's no longer actually showing anything. So I just clicked on it, and you can see here, the application that you were looking for was not found. Well, there's two problems with this. One is, it's sitting in my database, and two is that it's taking time every time I crawl the store to go look at this thing and to find something that's not there. So I wanted to do two things. I wanted to inactivate it, which I accomplished by adding an active flag on the application, and if this scenario happens, I go ahead and inactivate it so it doesn't show anymore. You'll see that here in a second. Second. The second thing I did is I said, I want a screenshot of what the, the crawler saw when it did that crawl. So I had to get creative and I went back to using my, um, my bash command that actually does the crawling and pulls the content. I said, well, I know there's an option or a switch on there to do an actual uh, screenshot. So here I've got my server up. This is my mid server. I've uh, remoted into it and uh, it's running in a mid container. And I'm just going to copy and paste the UR, the 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 command that does the uh, screenshot command, right? So I'm just going to right click here, I'm going to edit, and we're going to paste. And uh, of course, that doesn't work because you guys are watching. Let's try this. All right, it worked earlier when I pasted. Uh, let's see, Control or Command C over here. I'm running on a Mac, trying to get over to Windows, so it's kind of a fun little combination of things here. There we go. All right, paste it over. So let's dissect this a little bit. It's, so it's running the Chromium browser. You can see there at the top. It's in headless mode. That's important. I am basically saying, hey, I want you to take a screenshot using this application URL, all right? So that's the real simple, simple piece of it. We actually need to put in the application URL. So let's just backspace this there a little bit. And we want to come down here and we're just going to copy this URL from my application database. So I got the URL there and let's bring this back up and hopefully my paste works a little bit better this time. Edit and paste. There's my URL. So if I run this, it's going to create a file called uh, screenshot.png. So if I hit enter, um, ooh, I didn't like that. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? So I've got that screenshot and the URL. Oh, it's the exclamation point. So I've got to escape. Uh, my exclamation point. Uh, so let's try that again. Is it there? Nope. All right, so let's try that whole thing again. I didn't have this problem earlier because I was taking a screenshot of my blog page and, uh, ooh, that's not what I wanted. All right, clear. And we're gonna do edit and paste. Still not right. I think it's actually executing that because I included a character in there I shouldn't have. So let's copy again. Should be an interesting edit video to edit and right click and we will paste man i'm having tons of luck as soon as i hit the record button um things get wonky in here edit and paste there we go all right my application url we're going to grab again from my app my database so just going to copy that come back to my uh windows subsystem for linux and right click edit I know I can right click in there, but I want you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. Now I need to escape that uh, exclamation point because I am on a bash command line. So if memory serves, I think I just need to put a backslash in front of that exclamation point and I should be okay. Um, and it's running. Okay, so it's running in the background. Just ignore those errors. Uh, for the life of me, I have not been able to figure out what those errors are. And you can see there, it wrote the file uh, screenshot.png. So in theory, if I do a list command, I should have a file here called screenshot.png, and I do. All right, so that's number one. That's what I wanted to do. The second thing I needed to do was figure out how to attach this to a record in service now. So I'd like it attached to this record right here. 
and that's where it gets really fun. So I got to discover the attachment API, never used it before. I'm gonna copy and paste in, uh, like we've been trying to do, and hopefully I have better luck, um, the full command, but I'm gonna walk you through it, and I'm gonna have to blur out things like my password and my dev instance URL, but let's walk through it. First of all, I'm using curl. This is per the ServiceNow documentation. Um, it's navigating to my PDI, so I'm just gonna be blurred out, but it's my PDI, um, and it's going to my table name, which is right here, x underscore store update store application. And then the, I need to plug in the sys ID of the record that I want to attach this to, all right? So I'm still sitting on that behind the screen. So let's pull this up. And we're going to right here, copy sys ID. That's the record I want. So let's go back to uh, my Linux system here. And we're just going to, I'm, I might be shorter to go home and then arrow my way over. Or can I control tab? No, I can't. So we just air my way over to application underscore sys ID. I did that so that I didn't come in here and you were seeing me actually put the sys IDs in and not it already being pasted in there because I wanted you to see where they came from. I must have hit the insert button. Let's, uh. Oh man, I totally messed that up. What the heck is going on? Okay. Escape, escape. I don't know what's going on. Uh, clear. Uh, Control C. There we go. Clear. All right, let's try that again. We're just going to copy this over here and paste it into here. Edit, paste. All right. And then again, I need to get to my, let's go home. I need to get to my application underscore sys ID. I'll fast forward and post here. And I'm going to be very careful to only hit the delete button. I think there's just a display issue going on here. And I'm gonna trust that that actually deleted it. Now let's go grab my sys ID from here, copy sys ID, um, and then come back in here and we're going to right click the header there, edit and paste. And I think, well it definitely put in a sys ID, it just looks really bad from right here. It looks like I got an extra space too, so I'm just gonna get rid of that and Let's see if I can backspace my, ooh, this is looking better, okay. Man, that was so weird. Um, but now actually I'm missing part of the sys ID. Okay, let's, let's backspace all the way, get rid of that. Let's paste one more time. Uh, again, right click, edit, and paste. There we go, that's a full sys ID, all right? It's full sys ID, everything I want there, so let's walk through the rest of it. Um, this part right here, where it's given the file name, basically I'm telling Bash to use the date, and I'm telling it to use it in the 2023-07-17 format, so basically year, month, day, um, because today is the 17th. And then uh, basically I'm setting up the headers that are going through that command, and then I'm passing a user, which I'll blur out in post. Um, but basically I set up a user and granted them access um, as a web service only and a user on this particular application. That's it, that's all the access they have. And then for the data that I'm gonna pass, I use this little at symbol and then the name of the file that I just showed you, screenshot.png. And what it should do is it should attach the file to this record in ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and hit the enter key and see what happens, it's thinking about it. making that um, that rest call, maybe did I maybe click harder. There we go, there we go, it made it. Uh, and we got a response back from ServiceNow. Not, that's not important, I really don't care about the response. What I care about is did the attachment actually show here. So I'm gonna reload the form and we should see, there it is. There's my attachment, 0718. Um, wow, I somehow it moved to uh, the 18th, that's weird. And there you can see my screenshot, the application that you were looking for is not found. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted, right? So that's how it works. Let's see what this looks like when I plug it into a custom action in Flow Designer, all right? So here is the custom action, uh, retrieve application page screenshot. My inputs on this is just gonna be my application record. My application record has the sys ID of the record I wanna attach it to, and it also has the URL of the store application. And in my SSH step, it's everything I just showed you, except I'm gonna do some shortcuts around uh, passing the location using the um, record value, so that's application record, and then I have the location, which is, you can see here, a URL. Let's make sure my head's not in the way here. Yeah, it should be showing there, my the URL. So I just basically took this and dragged it and dropped it over into my script, 
And another additional thing is in Bash, I use this ampersand ampersand to run two commands in a row rather than show you like I did where I ran the terminal window and then ran the second one. I want them to run consecutively, so I use the ampersand ampersand. Um, and then the, the thing here for sysid, I also grabbed that from here. So I just grabbed sysid and dragged it over here and that put the sysid in that particular one. And everything else is good. Everything else is the same as I just showed you and there are no outputs, right? So that's the custom action. And in that custom action, it's in two subflows that I'm using. One subflow is when I manually call an application record crawl. So I say basically, hey, go crawl this application. And the second one is in my every Tuesday, I do crawl of everything I have in the database. And um, what's important here, the reason I'm showing you this is I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm going to set the application to an active. I'm gonna then retrieve the screenshot and then I'm going to update a crawl count uh, that I'm doing to see how many app applications were not found. So I'm just counting that for metrics and then I end my subflow. Um, in my one page application crawler, um, I'm basically doing almost the same thing except there's no counts, no crawler to update because I'm just doing one record. Uh, oops, I highlighted the wrong thing. Let's scroll back up there. It's right there. So basically I update the store application to say it's inactive now. I retrieve the screenshot, attach it, and I end the subflow because there's no sense in processing everything else. So let's show you what this actually looks like. Um, I've got in here, this is still active. We know this doesn't go anywhere. If I click on the URL, that's what it looks like. So I've got my app, my button up here for crawl app. Crawl app is gonna run this one, crawl one application. It's a call, it's a UI action to a subflow. So I'm gonna click on that and we're just gonna sit here and wait. And what I'm expecting are two things. One, the active date will change and the last crawl date will change. And that will keep me into, hey, it's done. And then actually you can see it happen right there while I was talking. So active is now inactive and our last crawl date is um, updated. So now it's accurate. And notice I don't see a screenshot yet because I just need to reload the record to see the screenshot. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna reload and I should have my screenshot there and I do pull that up and there is my screenshot of the application not found. So I thought this is really fun and really cool. I wanted to share with you all, I got to do some scripting, I got to do some um, headless browser work and put that all into a custom action and incorporate it in my application. And now I have a little bit more of efficient application in that I'm not crawling things that are no longer active in the store and I'm leaving myself evidence of what the crawler found the last time I was there. So if I ever come across something where um, all the variables didn't line up and for some reason it stopped crawling it, I'm going to see a screenshot of maybe something different. Maybe it'll be an error message. Maybe it'll be a page not found or 404 um, to show me that, hey, there's other situations where I might see this. But anyways, lots and lots of fun in Flow Designer, scripting, and a mid-server. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in doing strange things from your PDI into a mid-server to bring content like this to you on YouTube. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.